Good evening and welcome to the program, Easy Access to Healthcare for All. This program details events and activities in and around National Health Insurance Scheme and indeed the health insurance ecosystem. Constant engagement with stakeholders is a major part of the reforms that Professor Mohamed Sambanasar is implementing to make health insurance run smoothly and with minimal hitches. During this engagement, key stakeholders are kept abreast of the NHIS reforms, challenges are discussed, and solutions that will move the health insurance ecosystem forward are preferred. In this episode of the program, we bring you highlights of two recent stakeholders' engagement, one with healthcare providers and the other with healthcare maintenance organizations. Join me after the break for full package. My name is Aisha Mohammed Ahmed, your regular anchor. First on the program is the news diary. In our lineup, NHIS issues ID cards to NBA enrollees and NHIS trains top management staff in procurement processes. The National Health Insurance Scheme, NHIS, has issued identification cards to registered members of the Nigerian Bar Association, NBA. With the cards, beneficiaries can now access healthcare without paying at the point of service under the GiftShip program. The Nigerian Bar Association had last year enrolled 1,000 of its members into the health insurance program. In a brief ceremony at its corporate headquarters in Abuja, on Tuesday, 22nd February, the Executive Secretary of NHIS, Professor Mohammed Nasser Sambo, stated that the onboarding of lawyers will make Nigerians have confidence that the scheme is committed to efficient service delivery. In, in, in projecting the credibility of the National Health Insurance Scheme, when we have it right with the MBA, there are a group of aligned people. They will read every aspect of our law and guidelines below the line. And if there is any defaults, they will not take it uh, with levity. And this will have underscore right from the inception. It has many advantages. One, it will afford the NBA to be happy with joining the National Health Insurance Scheme. And it will provide opportunity for the remaining NBA members to, to join the, the scheme. And thirdly, it will provide opportunity for other members of our society to join. Sambo also noted that the scheme had not issued ID cards for years due to systemic challenges, adding that the cards presented to members of the association is encrypted and an offshoot of the automation of its operations. Speaking at the ceremony, the national president of the NBA, Olumude Apata, stated that health insurance is critical for the development of any society, adding that the association is considering the prospect of facilitating the enrollment of over 100,000 members nationwide. We can never underscore or overemphasize the importance of health insurance. And I keep on saying that this is something that we must make part of our culture. And that is why the job you are doing, we admire, we will continue to encourage you because insurance, particularly health insurance, must be part of our culture. We, we cannot continue with the, it is not my portion. You know, that is our culture. We will say, it is not my portion. And you, and we will run to whichever house of worship it is that we go to, hoping that we can ward away or ward off ill health. But it doesn't rain on only one roof. It, it rains on all roofs. And the time will come when it will be uh, the turn of each of us to encounter uh, uh, poor health. And that is where health insurance comes in. Some of the new gift ship enrollees express their excitement and speak of their expectations. I feel excited. I feel um, it's a dream come true for young lawyers um, who are just coming up. And then this program is, is uh, will, ensure, will help us in it, um maximizing the, uh, the health um, programs. 
I feel very happy. I feel very privileged to be among the beneficiaries. And I expect um, it to be an organized system and it will go as expected. The National Health Insurance Scheme has held a one-day retreat with the Bureau for Public Procurement for members of its management with a theme, Understanding the Public Procurement Processes. Part of our reform process. Executive Secretary of the NHIS, Professor Nasser Sambo, explains the essence of the retreat as being to build the capacity of members of staff as well as acquaint them with procurement processes. Okay, the significance of this engagement is part of our reform process. You know our reform process is an ongoing process which entails a lot of capacity building. The retreat was chaired by DG Bureau for Public Procurement, who was represented by engineer Babatunde Kuye. His presentations explain the various procurement processes. When we look at the drivers of public procurement, procurement planning committee, approving and awarding authorities, you know, now, FEC is an approving authority in the council. Before, they used to just be, you know, doing it without backing of the law. Now, they are an approving authority. So, we look at what that means and the effects or not. Then, we will look at some of our procurement documents and then possibly one or two other things. Other discussions bordered on management of bid evaluation procedures in procurement process, bid solicitation and tender documentation in procurement ETC. Participants speak on the significance of the program to them. This is the first time I'm experiencing this and honestly I'm happy for it because it has really exposed us to a lot of things that we didn't know, especially the procurement processes. This training has not only helped in building the capacity of the not only the procurement department or procurement staff but even the management and cascading down as the training goes on is cascading down to lower levels so that we will be able to enhance service delivery will be able to enhance the elements that will make our ratings in public domain to be better than what it used to be before Welcome back. To ensure strategic involvement of stakeholders in decision making, the scheme has created a platform where key stakeholders meet. It is a forum where players interface and discuss issues as it affects the health insurance processes. In the month of February, two stakeholders engagement took place and various issues were discussed. We bring you a summary of these engagements in our next segment on the issues. Stay tuned. Easy access to quality healthcare for all. NHIS. Where peace and justice reign. The strategic stakeholders' engagement with healthcare providers and health maintenance organizations held in Abuja. The meetings had in attendance representatives of both stakeholders across the country. Both forums serve to keep stakeholders abreast of the journey to a new NHIS and also provide an avenue to discuss issues that affect the health insurance ecosystem. During the meeting with healthcare providers, Professor NM Sambo gave the opening remarks where he highlighted the importance of the forum. The engagement was instituted at the beginning of my tenure when I unveiled the three-point rebranding agenda of the National Health Insurance Scheme, which includes restoring a value system that will transform NHIS into a credible, result-oriented organization, engendering transparency and accountability in the entire operations of the scheme, and accelerating the drive towards attainment of universal health coverage. When we uh, unveil this uh, three-point agenda, 
we went further to see how we can construct elements of each of the three agenda. But if you aggregate the elements that are very critical to this conversation, include one, openness in the operations of the National Health Insurance Scheme. Before I came to uh, the National Health Insurance Scheme, the operation of NHI is like a cultism. But I wanted to do away with that cult-like activities so that to allow people to come and discuss the issue of mutual importance freely. He noted that the interrelationship between stakeholders in the health insurance ecosystem is a dynamic one and healthcare providers have critical responsibilities because they interface directly with enrollees. It is important to note that the interrelationship between various stakeholders within the health insurance ecosystem is a dynamic one. Uh, NHIS and operation of NHIS, uh, health insurance anywhere in the world is not a static process. It is a dynamic. It is a dynamic process. Why is it a dynamic process? A simple, uh, a simple dynamics in the economic system of a country can affect the operations of the national health insurance scheme. So you have to ensure, we have to ensure that we have we put NHIS and operation of the national health insurance scheme in a trajectory that is dynamic. Among all the stakeholders within the national health insurance uh, 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 health insurance ecosystem, the healthcare providers have direct interface and critical responsibilities to our enrollees. There were various presentations including one on establishing a credible managed care unit by Dr. Adamu Onu, CMD Gerki Hospital. He used Gerki Hospital as a case study. There was also a presentation on the new flagship program of the NHIS, which is the group, individual and family social health insurance program designed to provide an opportunity for affordable individual enrollment. We have the gift sheet, which is... Dr. Kapuna Eteng gives more details on the program. This program, gift sheet, has been designed for to make sure that we achieve this aim by 2030. Now, the Honorable Minister of Health launched this program November 26, 2020, and in the slides I'll be showing next, I'll show you the coverage of what we have achieved since the launch of the program. Stakeholders were enlightened on eligibility and membership of giftship, giftship funding, giftship benefit package. One of the highlights of the event was the presentation on the NHIS Medicine Supply Initiative. It was by Dr. Agada Amade, the head of standards and quality assurance. He said the initiative will curtail the out-of-stock syndrome provide medicine security and correct the perception of enrollees on substandard medicines when they visit the hospital. Perception of medicines distribu distributed under the scheme is poor. The enrollee seems to have poor perception of the quality of drugs distributed under the scheme. Many studies have shown it. Uh, availability too is a problem. The out-of-stock syndrome is common in our hospitals. Uh, many feedback we get from the enrollees is that they are not getting the drugs. The evolution of the ENHIS was yet another presentation at the forum. Prince Nasuri Karo, who gave the presentation, stressed the urgent need for the scheme to move away from the fragmented environment that existed before the arrival of Professor Nasser Sambo to an integrated state by the year 2023 and attain electronic health record by the year 2025. When Prof came, he said, and we all agree that health insurance, and he did NHIS, is a data-driven organization. It's a data-driven organization. And we need to have that data in order for us to understand what's going on in the health insurance or in the health care industry, and for there to be some form of and uh, very intelligent uh, intervention effort by government. Similar presentations were made during the stakeholder engagement with health maintenance organizations, with Professor Nasser Sambo starting off the sessions. He stressed the importance of the forum. In 2019, the National Health Insurance Scheme introduced a three-point rebranding agenda designed to transform the organization and the entire health insurance ecosystem. 
through three points agenda, which include value and orientation, transparency and accountability, accelerating the drive towards attainment of universal health coverage. We went further to deconstruct these three elements and came up with so many elements. And uh, the ones that are very critical to this uh, activity we are doing today include our quest to ensure that there is adequate information to the stakeholders, uh, to ensure that there is a strategic involvement of stakeholders in decision making, to ensure that uh, we collectively work with evidence, which is a departure from what is used to happen in the national health insurance ecosystem in the past. HMOs also got to hear from the NHIS on the various initiatives and reforms, including the gift ship program, the medicine supply initiative, and the ENHIS. And with the emergence of ENHIS, stakeholders were urged to align their operations to fit into the ENHIS, with a presentation on connecting to ENHIS, interoperability, technology, and standard by Dr. Kenneth Okorafo. We have a singular objective for this particular presentation, and that objective is to sensitize HMOs, to be able to understand the scope of the deployment that NHIS is doing in terms of technology. Because it's only when you understand what NHIS is doing, you'll be able to know where to come in and how also to integrate your systems into our own environment. Another intriguing presentation was the report of the analysis of the financial audited statements. It borders on the financial health of HMOs and was presented by Mr. Momo Idoho and Dr. Ebere Uko. The next stage is positive reserve, and this is where we have problem. Please, I may be going out of here. This is where we have problem. And it has to do with profitability. And we are finding that most of the HMO are not making profit at all. The sustainability and continuity of any business is profitability. It's not tied to the quantum of cash you have. When you cannot make profit, that means you are going out of business. Hadia Falmata from the Contribution Department also gave a presentation on reconciliation scorecard and expectations. It borders on disbursements and remittance of funds. The main objective of the reconciliation amongst others is to ensure that there is a um, prompt and accurate payment of capitation fee for service to healthcare facilities so that our enrollees will have um, prompt um, care have access to health care which is in line with the executive secretary's um, three-point agenda of um, universal health coverage we also want to ensure that the HMO's financial records and processes align with the scheme's specifications to ensure that unpaid capitation related fee for service and admin charges are returned to the scheme. One thing that the forums ensured was that stakeholders are all on the same page as to where the NHIS is and where it is headed, as well as the various roles each one must play to make sure Nigerians get the best of health insurance. Welcome back from that break. The program is Easy Access to Healthcare for All, and it continues with our stakeholders segment. While the stakeholder engagement were on, we spoke to stakeholders on various issues about the NHIS and especially on such gatherings. For them, 
The creation of such meeting is a good development. This engagement is the most detailed and involved I have ever been part of. Uh, and I've been active in this uh, industry for more than two decades. Um, particularly, I am interested in the breakdown, the financial analysis of the HMOs. Um, it shows that um, all is not as we thought it was. Uh, we intend to pursue a lot of the discoveries we have made today. Indeed, I've already talk, spoken with the presenter, uh, Mr. Momo, and uh, we hope that this initiative will continue and will be, be even more robust in the years ahead. It's a very good one, good initiative, and with all everything that we have discussed here, it's going to help NHIS in Nigeria, it's going to boost the health sector. The new NHIS has been quite fantastic. Um, they have done excellently well by engaging stakeholders to know the exact problems and addressing them. And they have engaged the stakeholders before now, and they have addressed quite a number of our worries. One of the things they have addressed is the issue of the tariff. The tariff has been grossly under, and with the new NHIS tariff, things are now getting better. Healthcare providers praise NHIS for creating a forum to meet and discuss with healthcare facilitators in a bid to give enrollees of the scheme a stress-free and quality service. It's something that I had longed to really have such kind of a meeting because there are some intricate issues that are lying within the NHIS, especially the operational dynamics that we have within the hospital. Um, um, most importantly is the way we reconcile the bills and so I felt when I saw this notice for the meeting I was eager. I had already sent my staff ahead to come and prepare the ground so that we can really have it a, a well deliberated um, meeting. For HMOs, they said they were ready to partner with the NHIS as it relates to ENHIS and its interoperability. For us at the Police HMO, we are currently developing a software that we feel that is robust enough to be incorporated into the ENHIS. Uh, we've already uh, started this thing and uh, by tomorrow when we've seen the details of what the ENHS is all about, we will be able to see whether we can key into it and uh, if not, then we will know a way to go about it. Mr. Lekai Ewenla, on his part, expressed his view on the financial audited presentation. This is the first time in the history of the scheme uh, taking the bold step to look at the financial well-being of the private investors in the health insurance industry. Because the fact remains that um, it's only when the HMOs are financially strong that they can be seen providing the desired services that is expected of them. So for the scheme to have taken that direction, I want to say kudos to the leadership of the AGHS. This is the first time in the history of the scheme looking deeper into the financial status of the health maintenance organizations. Some stakeholders commended the effort of the leadership of the NHIS for introducing policies like the gift ship to help every Nigerian access quality and affordable health care. That's a very wonderful initiative, actually, because it will help to get to other people that are not civil servants, okay? Groups, people in the villages, societies, and all those that will help to bring them into the system so that things will move on fine. So that, in fact, their, their aim of getting to every Nigeria very soon will be achieved. Stakeholders in the NHIS there commenting on the constant engagement with the NHIS and other newly introduced initiatives to improve performance. And like you heard, it's commendations all the way for the new wave sweeping over the NHIS. We'll now take your questions next in the last segment of the program. Where do I register? How can I get enrolled? How can I get enrolled? How can I get enrolled? Question. Can an enrollee access healthcare services outside his or her state? We have a list of accredited healthcare facilities all over Nigeria, and you are entitled to, as a referral case, 
You could be referred from Abuja to assess care outside Abuja. You could be referred to any hospital with the adequate uh, skills, uh, manpower and equipment to treat you uh, in any part of Nigeria. But again, at primary level of care, you are restricted to one facility. And that facility is what we call your primary uh, healthcare provider. So you are registered with, healthcare, with that particular hospital or, or health center, and you are to go there to assess care at the primary care. That hospital is capable of referring you, like I said earlier, to any other hospital. Where do I register? How can I get enrolled? How can I get enrolled? How can I get enrolled? I think I paid almost almost nothing. We went easy. We only paid 10%. We all work towards accelerating universal health coverage. Everybody, irrespective of focus, gender, has access to basic health care services. With this, we've come to the end of today's episode of Easy Access to Healthcare for All. Please join us next week, same time and same station for another interesting package. And as I sign off, I urge you to get enrolled into any of the NHIS programs to get easy access to healthcare for you and your loved ones. See you next week.